Wuthering Waves. I legitimately want to like this game. Now, I did play CBT1 and I didn't get into or at least a try CBT2, but I'm going to be honest, from my opinions on CBT1, my original expectation was that I wasn't going to enjoy this game. It was on the basis that I didn't like Close Beta Test 1. It wasn't necessarily the poor performance issues, which I still experience now, but more so the game didn't feel like it had anything special to me back then. I played it for about a week and then I immediately dropped it, even though I still had access to the closed beta. And in that instance, for that closed beta test, don't get me wrong, there were some changes that were made. Obviously, half the text we received, both in the story and as subtitles, was just in Chinese. But here, obviously, that's fixed. Now, though, I still don't know. WW has a lot of things going for her. I do like Verena. She's very cute and very funny. And I do legitimately think that, yes, once you fix the saturation or brightness of this game, it does look prettier. Then Yang, I like his design. He's very cute. I don't play in English. I play in JP constantly. JP voice acting is always better. Encore is adorable, but beyond any of these facets that I'm talking about, which is just the appearance of a character, I don't have a deeper attachment to any of them. I know in a lot of ways this game wants to at least mimic Genshin, but be better in a lot of other ways, but it doesn't do that. Combat in theory is nice, parrying, countering, dodging, that is nice, but that doesn't always work. Ignoring performance mechanics and all that aside, there are certain bosses in this game that outright don't feel like they want you to utilize the combat's active mechanics, such as parrying, blocking, and those things, the things that actively require you to pay attention and have precise timing. Inferno Rider rides around in his bike a lot, so the weakness mechanic, which would otherwise have you break down an individual stamina bar to knock them down, doesn't matter because if you do it to him, he gets off his bike and then has another bar. That would seem like a fun mechanic, but by the time you deplete that secondary bar, he's dead. The turtle, or the bell, seems like a great massive enemy, and you can break off little pieces and bits of its armor over time, and that is a cool feature, but the camera doesn't know how to work during this fight. The camera for this boss fight in particular gets stuck inside of him, so you can't see the attacks. So when he drops down because his stamina bar is depleted, he just hits you no matter what, unless you've just been frantically dodging with the expectation of him to drop. Thundering Mephis teleports around a lot, which would seem fine, but the camera sometimes has difficulty tracking him when he teleports. So instead of you facing off against the boss where you're just having to have quick reaction times, you're also having to guesstimate what he's going to do if the camera's not catching up with him. This subsequently also happens with the Heron because the Heron can fly. Aerial enemies are the bane of this game's existence. I understand that the camera may be improved, but I'm wanting to review this game just based on what I have access to right now. I haven't heard a single individual say they enjoyed the Nang story quest. Gion is a fun character to play, but beyond that, what is the attachment a lot of individuals have? Yes, his story quest is there, but if we're looking at just the main quest line itself, the main quest line feels like, and this is just me being a player of other games, the Hogwarts games uh, speaking, but the main quest feels like what it's trying to mimic is the Sumeru and Fontaine act, or even the second harbor or secondary act, in that it wants to have multiple characters involved and all of the major characters and players involved, such as the old man who just comes out of nowhere, Mortifi, Alto, Encore, Verena, and so on. And you have all these characters in one place, but the game didn't do the work to not only set that up, but more so to introduce me and get me to know these characters. The reason that those big acts and those big finales work within the Genshin and HSR games is because I've had a good solid few hours to get to know every single individual. Realistically speaking, you could have a mini finale, but a final finale for that respective region before moving on or is the respective world. This works because you've had multiple months and multiple story quests and events to get to know each of these individual characters so you actually have an attachment to them. Here, I don't. You were introduced, properly speaking, to Gion for about 5-10 to 10 minutes where you play as him, get barely any context on him from his individual side, and then you're thrust into a scenario where the game wants you to care about these decisions. And the game doesn't do a good job of that because the decisions you're able to make as the rover aren't really your decisions. I understand the concept is, hey, you can have multiple dialogue options and they each can mean nothing or something altogether. But in this instance, the game will ask you a question, have, give you three answers, one of those answers is correct, and the way you can legitimately tell if you pick the correct one is if Rover is not speaking. If Rover answers and starts speaking first, you picked wrong, and the game resets you back to that choice anyway. It's a minor gripe, but it's there nonetheless. This is something I've always hated in HSR and I hate it here. It's that a lot of my passive abilities and sections of my kit feel locked off behind the respective levels and investment I have within this, which I feel like I should just get just for getting the character. But hey, whatever. Echoes, I will always say, I feel like are worse than just having an artifact system. This isn't just because Echoes are 
bad because I have to run around and farm them or repeatedly kill the same boss, but more so echoes, in my opinion, really should have just been a four stat line. As in, you only need four pieces to get a four set and then have an off piece. Genshin did this the best, in my opinion. I don't know why every other game wants to have a four five set. Just let me have an off piece. It makes flexibility so much better, especially with the boss mats, especially with the boss echoes you want me to get. But that's a story for another time. And yes, it's not me saying this game is bad. I do think that the weapon banner system is better so long as they only have one weapon. If they have two, then I can make it, I can see a point being made for Genshin's weapon banner because you have the chance of just getting both. But that's another story for another time. And I don't want it to be a scenario to where you look at this and you say, oh, you're a Horiverse player, so your opinion's invalid. Because I understand. But if this game wants to mimic, beat, or take a lot of the aspects of a Horiverse game and improve on it, that's the best basis of comparison you're going to get is from a Horiverse game. And this game doesn't do what Genshin does. This game doesn't do what HSR does. This game doesn't do what the contemporaries are trying to do or have done better. It's seeming like, yeah, it's half-baked and I understand you can say rush development time, but that doesn't matter. For the consumers, all that matters is what came out. And that is a buggy game that many individuals can't play. That is a game with bad voice acting. That is a game with a bad or at least very bumpy story. I want to like the game. I want to get attached to these characters. Why am I having to find that, that fun, so to speak? The game gives you and says, hey, we have a free five star. Eventually you're going to get them. But let's be honest here. To get that free five star weapon, you have to reach end game, which is basically gated behind your daily commissions, your daily quests, because you're not going to be getting that experience unless you're refreshing or using all your wave plates or doing something or else. And yeah, you've had a couple glitches here and there. I don't want to speak on them because a lot of them are patched. Yeah, I can understand that. But still, they're not good. First impressions matter a lot. With ZZZ releasing in July 4th, you kind of have a position to where a lot of players are going to hang on to this game. Go try ZZZ. And if that has the combat they were promised, they're just going to leave. Combat in this game, in my opinion, feels nice. If you have Gion. In my opinion, Gion, I don't have Kalkarra. I can't talk about him. But in my opinion, Gion being a very close range combatant means that he, in theory at least, gives you that feel of being able to actively and at least reliably counter and parry mechanics. But if you're using a Xia, yeah, if you're using an Encore, you definitely can't parry unless you're in your ult. Then Yang, I don't necessarily know about because I haven't tested him out too much. So there are two respective classes, with that being guns and catalysts, that aren't really able to properly play with the game's mechanics. And Gion is fast paced, he's close ranged, but his dragon is a heavy attack and his dragon allows him to double hit, which basically allows him to constantly and pretty reliably parry any attack whether he's trying to or not. And so it's less of a Gion really works well with this mechanic and more of a Gion allows me to ignore a game mechanic that just doesn't work half the time. Because I'm gonna be honest, there are a lot of things that just don't feel like they work properly. Echoes. My echo is something that I'm not picking based on the uniqueness of its damaging effects or, or the uniqueness and utility it provides me with, like Flame Rider or Inferno Rider here that has is basically a mount pretty consistently. I'm not picking him because he's a mount. I'm not picking him because he's cool. I'm picking him because he provides me a damage bonus. And I know that's fine, but that means that basically everyone's build is going to be the exact same. Oh, your arrow? Monkey. Oh, your, your fire? Inferno Rider. Oh, your Farina? The bell. Unless you have something else with a like, healing bonus and you can't get the bell yet. So the flexibility is gone. But then if I'm talking about the echo itself, why is it that my echo is a skill that can be grappled out of? Why is it that a damaging attack or a healing attack or whatever the case may be, where I am essentially locked within an animation, I can be grappled out of? I I, I can still be damaged. I, I understand you don't want to give me infinite iframes, but at least give me some degree of iframes to where I can time that properly. Because otherwise, I'm never going to use my echo skill if I have a chance of being grappled slightly. And I understand you can say just plan better, but what about the enemies that teleport? What about the enemies that fly up that you can't see the grapple of? What about the enemies that move extremely fast? That is an issue. And so it's a situation to where I like this game. I don't hate it. I want to like it, but I can only comfortably rate it a 5 out of 10 at best. And longevity is something I'm considering. And if I'm considering the launch this game had, the, the biggest pro this game has had was been the dick riders. I'm not going to lie. Like, like, what do you, what do you want a lot of individuals to say? You have people who can't play the game. And if they're told they can't play the game, if they're having issues and talk about it, people say, well, no, either A, a Hoyoverse gamer, or B, I've been having no issues. What's good for you, but fuck you. No one cares. Uh, the situation is, this is a fine game that I think could have been better and should have been better. Not necessarily in the aspect of what it had to offer, but more so in the aspect of at least a technical launch could have been better. No one wants to feel like they're playing a beta. No one wants to play a game if the beta went bad. And 
considering that basically YouTube has been an onslaught of, hey, Genshin could never, this game did good. Genshin would never release an unfinished game. Hoyoverse hasn't released an unfinished, half-broken mess for a lot of individuals. The generosity people, you know, try to push and essentially promote this game has had was just because the launch was so shit. They weren't like giving out selectors because, oh yeah, we have so many downloads and oh yeah, you know, we're making so much money. No, they're giving out selectors because please stay with the game. We don't have anything else. This game was supposed to match and ended up matching barely Tower of Fantasy, which isn't a good look. I'm not saying this game is bad. I'm just saying that I can't say it's good either. I can just say it's an average middling experience, but if something else came along that actually had a solid launch or at least was offering what it claimed to offer, I would recommend going playing that. When ZZZ comes, I'm going to play ZZZ. Azure Lane Premier comes, I'm going to play that. Enfield, I'm going to play that. And if any of them do this game or do what this game set out to do better than it, I'm just going to leave this because this game has nothing special. This game has the hallmarks of a Hoyoverse Genshin game, but none of the special mechanics that make this feel like a Kuro Games, that make this feel like it has the combat taken from PGR. Devs listed, but to what? Rewriting the entire story? That's not a good thing because it obviously didn't work. And I know that like 80% of the comments were people saying, yeah, you know, it's just you, you know, or 80% will realistically be, fuck you, you're a Hoyoverse gamer, or your opinion's invalid because I've had no issues, or I actually love the shitty voice acting of this game, which is fine. You're going to have bad taste. That's wonderful. But I'm going to occasionally log in if that's, by the way, tell me your thoughts.